I have made this argument before, uh, but uh, because of some recent news, uh, you know, I feel like I have to make this argument again. The argument being that the status quo will not save us. And what do I mean by the status quo? Well, right now, the status quo for the, the, the political party that's in the minority, which is the Democrats, uh, status quo would be going to some other Democrat. That's not going to help. Uh, and really, the reason why I'm even talking about this now is because of the Joe Rogan controversy uh, that we have returned to. We've returned to another fucking Joe Rogan controversy. <laughs> um, I listened to the clip. And some someone posted about it. A couple, well, a couple people posted about it, uh, claiming that he had said that he is going to vote for Trump. And I was like, well, that's kind of strange, um, you know. And he said that he would vote for Trump over Biden, which would check out. Um, Joe Rogan voted for a libertarian in the last election. He he talks about that pretty openly. Uh, he wanted to support Tulsi Gabbard, and he said that he was in full support of Bernie Sanders as well. Uh, and if you remember back to 2016, after Hillary got into the nomination for the Democratic Party, uh, you know, there were a lot of people, and I met these people, and I had a hard time believing that these people existed as well, uh, is there were a lot of people that were Bernie supporters that voted for Trump. It's a reality. That's part of the part of the thing that that we have to accept. Um, why do they do that? Uh, some of them just said fuck it. The other people basically said that the Democratic Party doesn't have uh, any of their interests in mind, and they're not wrong. I don't think the Democratic Party has any of the working class people, immigrants, LGBTQ, any any of these identities that are all part of the working class community. Um, they don't have their the, uh, our interests in mind. They just don't. Historically speaking, you can you can see that. Um, so now it's sort of this mad dash for the status quo, so that people can go back to complacency, right? Um, so that people can kind of go back to being like, oh, thank God, Democrats in. Okay, all right. I don't have to pay attention to this shit anymore because it's so exhausting. Um, so. Uh, I basically made the comment that Trump and Biden are the same, which if you look at their record, if you look at who Joe Biden is as a person and who Donald Trump is as a person, they're virtually the same individual. They virtually have the same beliefs. They virtually have the same policies. Uh, the treatment of people is virtually the same, um, you know, and and th and this is sort of the problem with Joe Biden. And it's it's kind of the same reason why. Uh, Rogan said that he's not going to vote for Biden is, first of all, um, Joe, Ro Joe Rogan said, brought up in, in that podcast that uh, Biden's mental health is in severe decline, which it is, but Bi Biden's cognitive health is in severe decline. And, uh, and it 100% is. It, it definitely is in severe decline. I think everybody knows this. Everybody can see it. Um, and if you want somebody that has uh, a, the question really should be is, do you think the leader of the free world, whether you think Joe Biden is going to win or not, do you think that they should have a severe cognitive deficiency? I mean, to me, the answer is very clear and easy, which is uh, no, no, you shouldn't. I think you should kind of be sharp. You should kind of know what the fuck you're saying. You should kind of be able to put together uh, coherent full sentences and you should be able to put together thoughts. Um, you should be able to come up with plans and stay and stick with them. Um, you know, but look at the way that Joe Biden treats women. Uh, you could see the you could see, uh, see you could see that in, in the in the uh, Anita Hill deposition and how badly he treated her. During that, he, Tara Reid came out and said that he straight up sexually assaulted her. 
right? I mean, isn't that one of the big things about Trump that that that, that these Democrats don't like is that uh, is that he's 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 a, a sexual abuser, he's a sexual assaulter, that he's like basically raped women, like, and that's basically what Joe Biden did is rape a lady, like that's and it's out there. Corporate media won't touch it, you know. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, he's a trickle down economics guy. He basically said that he he's straight up said that he would veto Medicare for all. Straight up said that he would veto Medicare for all. He also basically said that the way that we should deal with this uh, global pandemic that we are in is by letting the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical industry do what it needs to do, which is make money off of it, which is basically how they deal with these problems, right? And now you have Trump, who is enacting his version of Medicare for All uh, with, the, with the CARES Act, I believe is what it's called, uh, where he's, he's basically saying that he's going, to, um, he's going to give people that are, just go to the hospital and get tested and it'll be covered as a Medicare for All thing. The hospitals will be paid as a Medicare by under Medicare rates. So just go. Don't worry about the paperwork. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Get tested. Get better. And and move on. And get back to your life. That's that's Trump's plan right now. Uh, Biden said he would veto Medicare for all. Biden hasn't come up with a plan. Biden hasn't done a goddamn thing. On a live stream. There's a clip uh, that I watched this morning of Biden talking to a couple in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and, and the, the woman had uh, contracted the virus and is wearing a mask so that she doesn't infect her um, child and husband, who's a freelancer. And she asks him, hey, when, when things get bad and our savings are depleted, which they will be, which, uh, which do you think we should give up first? Food? rent or health insurance and he goes don't give up anything <laughs> that's not how it works joey uh people don't have an infinite reserve of cash uh and and you're not for the for any sort of reserves of cash at all you know like look the the, the 1200 dollars stimulus bill is is not going to help anybody I mean, it's a very short-term plan at best but again Tell me how what Joe Biden is doing is better than what Trump is doing. I don't think there is an answer to that. Joe Biden is an arrogant human being that will not apologize for what he's done in the past. Neither will Trump. Joe Biden has talked down to reporters that challenge him uh, about his stances on climate change, on his stances on health care, on his stances on the military, on his stances on race uh, issues, and his record with working with segregationists. He will talk down to them. He'll scream at them. He'll go tell them to vote for somebody else. Trump does the same thing. So once again, please point out to me how Joe and Trump are vastly different And then the argument of, of fascism is brought into play, right? Which is like, it doesn't matter what party you're in. There's already fascistic things that are happening in this country that were enacted by Democrats. Still today, there are, are, there are things that, are, uh, that, that were enacted by Democrats that are in play. 1912, Woodrow Wilson was in, in, in office. He won that election. He put the Espionage Act in play. That act right now is going to be uh, used against a fucking journalist Let's go recently, right? Since we're talking about Joe Biden, let's talk about Barack Obama, since Joey B loves to bring up Barack Obama. <laughs> loves to bring up that dude, right? Barack Obama opened up uh, the surveillance program, um, revealed that the NSA is spying on everybody. Vault 7 leaks were happen Vault 7 leaks happened under Obama. Increased a drone program that killed thousands and thousands and thousands of people. That's part of Joe Biden's legacy that's that's i mean you, telling me that spying on your citizens through technology is not fascistic telling telling me that uh in increasing uh military activities across the globe just because we fucking want to is not fascistic and that's all done 
under both Democrats and Republicans. But for these vote any blue kind of people, well, the only time that it matters is when a Republican does it. <laughs> when they come knock down my doors. Yeah, that threat has been a reality for 22 fucking years. And that threat hasn't changed just because I got my citizenship, by the way. What I believe in is a threat to the establishment. What I'm saying and how I say it, using comedy as my vehicle to bring people together, is a threat to the establishment. And regardless of who's in office, that has never changed. Barack Obama deported more immigrants than the last three presidents combined. I was an immigrant under Barack Obama, which means that I was under threat under Barack Obama. The Republicans screwed me over. The Democrats screwed me over. Same. I mean, that's, this, is a, this is the truth for millions and millions of other people. Joe Biden and Trump are no different than each other. And Joe Biden has virtually no chance to stand up against that Adderall-ridden human being because he is Adderall-ridden. If you're going to sit there and vote shame people now, by the way, you're, you're going to vote shame people in the middle of a in, in the middle of a global pandemic where we don't even know what November's going to look like at this point i mean you're guaranteeing that progressives who are already pissed who are already disillusioned who who are already like in in a state of burn everything to the ground. Let's figure out how to exit the party. Let's figure out how to create our own thing. Let's figure out how to maybe create a proxy government or some shit. You're going to sit there and vote shame them. And that's your plan. Who I vote for is my business. I don't have to tell you who I voted for. And quite frankly, I'm not going to make that decision until probably November 8th before I have to push the fucking button. It's really when I'll make the decision. And whether I choose to or not is my right. It's, it's my right to exercise, not yours. So shitting on me for who I vote for or who, if I choose to vote at all is doing what? For your cause, which your cause seems to be lining up with a party that doesn't represent you and hasn't represented you for 20, 30 odd years. And the argument of privilege gets brought into play, right? Like, I, I get called privileged or whatever. And it's just like, what, how is this an argument? I'm privileged because I want to change a system that's not working for anybody. I am a broke fucking artist right now. <laughs> and have been. I've been broke most of my life. I'm a broke immigrant that just became a citizen I'm an artist, I'm a blue collar working artist that tours around the country talking about basically socialist ideologies that will never be on any sort of major television network, that will never be on Netflix or anything, and has no desire for fame. But somehow that makes, that gives the, me a point of privilege of, of some kind. Has never, that argument has never made any sense to me. Really what, what, Joe Rogan has brought up as an argument that myself, Lee Camp, Eleanor Goldfield, Kid Cabello at, at Hardlands Media, and J uh, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Graham Elwood, Kim Iverson, I mean, the list goes on, have been talking about for years now, is that this is a systemic problem, that the Democratic Party doesn't give a shit about you, and it doesn't matter what party is in power. The party represents a system. Both of them do. Both parties represent a system. The system doesn't work for you. And what we need is dynamic, radical, fundamental change in that system. And we shouldn't be wor being worried about an election during a fucking global pandemic where people are getting scared that they're going to have to choose between rent, food, and health insurance. And Joe Biden has no answer for any of that shit. The status quo will not and will never 
save you. So if you're an any blue will do kind of person that is that is looking to to go back into respite to to get some reprieve into oh I can lounge and not think about anything ever again. I can just I can just let Joe Biden run the con whoo whoo my goodness, I've been using my brain too much. It, you know, if you want to go back to that, it's just not going to happen. We're done with complacency. That era is over. That era is over. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about electoral politics in this country. I don't. Uh, but I know that uh, my desire to participate in it came from two candidates, uh, Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders. That was my desire to participate in the electoral process, in the voting process in this country. I don't see any other candidate that uh, has earned my vote, and that's what it should be. Uh, Joe Biden doesn't automatically get my vote because I have to register as a Democrat, and I'm not a Democrat, by the way. I'm not. I don't affiliate myself with that party. I have to register as one because this is a closed primary state. Pennsylvania is a closed primary state. But uh, think again if you think I am one. The status quo will not save you. We will save each other. We will help each other. But uh, the status quo will not save you. So you can vote any blue. I, I, I've made the decision in 2016 not to vote shame anybody for who they voted for. Um, I, will, I will discuss the reasons why uh, and why we have a disagreement in, in, in the choice of candidates. Um, I, will, I will try to have civil discourse with you, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're a monster or what have you, so on and so forth, right? Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be here to listen to, 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 to you, to your issues, and what you, what you believe, uh, what ideas, philosophies uh, you believe in, and why you thought this candidate was going to represent that. That's more important. The ideas are more important. Joe Biden doesn't fucking matter. Donald Trump doesn't matter. And by the way, for, for saying that you won't vote for Joe Biden doesn't mean that it's an automatic, um, automatic expression to vote for Trump automatic support for Trump. That sort of binary thinking um, comes from this, this duopoly that we're in. This desperate need for, for just an, uh, an additional point of view, an additional perspective that's needed. So we have to get beyond the status quo. We have to make a new status quo, a status quo that, that is actually progressive, that, that actually cares about the individuals, that actually it, 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 that, that puts corporations secondary, that puts profit on the secondary, that, has, that, that values meaning and purpose and fulfillment and happiness and joy and, and doing something that, that is b bigger than just the, the amount of money that's in your bank account. The status quo will, will not save you. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, 
Thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.